this video is about a new African discovery and it happened in 2010. And you guys are gonna be like, man, bro, like this happened in 2010. This is not a new discovery. Like why are you trying to clickbait <laughs> essentially? However, when it comes to say like archeology, span when it comes to history, when they, whenever they make a discovery, these things take so much time to get into just popular culture, if you will, or just a textbook. It takes years, almost decades to get into a textbook and to be sort of common knowledge, if you will. So this recent, this discovery in 2010, in my opinion, is recent because the scholars are just now, not just now, but they've been like discussing uh, this new discovery and seeing like whether it's valid or not or seeing whether okay is this legitimate because you can't just have this new discovery and say okay let's put it in the history books like it take it's a long drawn out process and it's a necessary process so what did these guys discover all right so i don't know if you guys think you guys can see it there's a little glare at least on my end okay so so the iron smelting technology they found was in like i believe this area right here essentially the heart of africa right in the heart of africa right here central africa northern cameroon i believe so right right about here these people ostensibly would have been niger congo speakers um i can i think we can make that safe assumption because essentially the bantu ex migration or expansion like started from there um so this was the first place human beings homo sapiens created iron smelting this is where iron smelting began this was the place central african republic uh republic um northern parts of cameroon that that region the heart of africa literally our direct ancestors that that is exceptional so Christopher Eric, he's a leading, he's one of the leading scholars when it comes to ancient Africa. I personally consider him up there. Like whatever he says is golden, if you will. I'd say that um, when it comes to ancient Africa. So his book, I highly recommend this book. It's called Ancient Africa, Global History to 300 CE, Christopher Eric. And this came out in 2023 or 2024, around there. So this is a very recent, recent book. And in this book on page 37, I'll show it to you real quick. He says, in the case of iron working, the earliest dated sites in the world for the smelting of iron going back 4,000 or possibly more years are located in the Central African Republic and neighboring parts of Cameroon in the middle of the continent. So that's a, that's a big statement right there. That's a huge statement. That's huge. That's, that's an absolutely a paradigm shifter in African history. It's a huge paradigm. I'm sorry. It's a paradigm shifter <laughs> in world history that changes everything that changes the history books. Now, are the history books going to change because of this? I, I don't know. Is it going to happen anytime to anytime soon? I, I doubt it. You know, like the, the stages of human development or civilization, if you will, um, in general, are is like, you know, the Stone Age, Bronze Age and, you know, the Iron Age. <clears throat> And in each age, you know, humans advanced. Uh, they they got more civil they got more civilized, uh, so to speak. Okay, so for example, when uh, the people of the Soninka people, when they started doing iron, they were one of the first people in West Africa to really utilize iron to make weapons. And so they were kind of able to <laughs> to unify their group and create the first empire in, in Africa. But basically, iron iron was huge. It was a huge moment in human history. And for Africans to have been the ones who independently invented it first, that's significant because what do they tell us? They said iron working uh, or iron smelting was founded in uh, uh, Anatolia or, or Turkey. Here's what Etienne uh, Zangato and Augustine Hall said in their actual paper. And they made a point to point this out because they because they knew this is the paradigm shifter. So this is the quote from Etienne Zangato and Augustine Hall in their 2010 article. You guys can look it up on Google. If you want me to say it again, I can say it or type it in the chat or something. Um, they said that these sites that they found of the iron smelting, these sites of around 4,000 years ago represent the earliest iron working yet known, not just in Africa, but anywhere in the world. They are not just too early in time, but separated 
by far too great a geographical distance to allow for any possible outside of Africa source for the technology. So it goes to your point, Michael, because, you know, they, they find this new information and it's a paradigm shifter. And then they start saying, well, you know, maybe these app, maybe uh, ancient Mediterranean peoples or uh, the ancient Greeks or the Middle Eastern people traveled down to Central Africa at, at one point and introduced this technology and they they were able to utilize it. And Augustine, Augustine Hall and Etienne Zangato seem to have uh, predicted sort of that reaction and, and, and was just like, guys, like this is way too far of a geographical distance for anybody to have crossed the Sahara, essentially, just to introduce iron working or iron smelting. I, it's, it's really interesting, man, because like, it, it just seems as though like, say, say recently they discover that, um, you know, iron smelting began in ancient China or whatever. Is, is there really anybody going to say that Native Americans crossed the, the sea and went into China, introduced iron smelting to them or Europeans introduced iron smelting to uh, the Chinese or Middle Easterners introduced iron work? And I, I just highly doubt they would say something like that. I highly doubt that. So on page 27, I have it highlighted here. Wow. OK, I have it highlighted here and I'm going to read it to you guys real quick. <clears throat> So scholar Christopher Arad is saying, yet there is still another remarkable African first in iron technology that we must take into account. As the investigations by the archeologist Peter Smith have revealed by the end of the first millennium BCE, African iron smelters living in the African Great Lakes region began to construct furnaces capable of generating sufficiently high temperatures to produce carbon steel directly from the smelt. And this is no small matter. Europeans did not learn to produce steel by a single step until the invention 2000 years later in the 19th century of, of the Bessemer process. The Chinese were also ahead of the West in this respect. They had developed capacities for directly producing steel by the 11th century CE but even their advance took place centuries after African smelters already had attained this capability. So that's, that's a mouthful, but that is exceptional information. So where's the Great Lakes region? Here's my little uh, globe right here. And the Great Lakes region, I don't know, there's a kind of like a glare. Okay. So the Great Lakes region is in Eastern Africa. I believe it's, let me see. I can't see the lake here, but I, I think it's right here. Like around Uganda, Kenya. I don't know if you guys can see that. There's like, a, okay. Like this, this region right here. So we have Africans over here first to do iron smelting according to the data. And over here, they were creating furnaces. Okay. So yeah, they were creating furnaces um, with sufficiently high temperatures and nobody was able to do this. No other human group was able to do this until much later. Anyway, so David Hume, he said in a quote, and this kind of goes to the lies of that Europeans were kind of spreading. He said, I am apt to suspect the Negroes and in general, all other species of men to be naturally inferior to whites. There never was a civilized nation of any complexion than white. And this is one of their greatest minds. Like he's celebrated even to this day. Now, obviously, you know, some of them may, you know, be like, okay, you know, he's a man of his time or whatever. Got it. You know, understood. I get that. But I'm just, you know, revealing some of the things he said <clears throat> so you can get an understanding of just the general European uh, sentiment and framework. I mean, this is not just European. This was you know, people in the Middle East felt the same way because they enslave Africans as well. And so, again, when you enslave these people, they can they cannot be on your level like they can't be in order for you to sleep at night, <laughs> if you will. Um, so you, you have to denigrate them. You have to dehumanize them. 
and they cannot absolutely cannot compete with you in in any way in any um form of human activity ultimately so yeah david hume said this and you know when we read this it's just kind of like especially with discoveries like even before this discovery by the way but especially with discoveries like this it's just kind of like wow man you kind of see how the world is created by fiction a lot of the world there's a quote by yuval harari um he wrote a book called sapiens <clears throat> i mentioned this before he said every imagined hierarchy disavows its fictional origins and claims to be normal or inevitable and so what david hume here is doing is he's creating this imaginary hierarchy saying that white is on top if you have white skin you have civilization the darker your skin the less civilization you have or non-civilization um you have and it's, it's it's pure fiction it's pure fiction 